brighten your day by watching the Time with Teresa television show. Whether in the studio or on location, Teresa Westbrook and guests will warm your heart and encourage your soul. And now, your host, Teresa Westbrook. Welcome to the program. Well, it's that wonderful time of year again that most of the world sets aside to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ with our families and friends. There's going to be lots of laughter, lots of festivities, and lots of food. But today, we're blessed to explore the historic and miraculous birth of Christ through the eyes of his half-brother, James, who got the information firsthand from their mother, Mary. And now, sit back, relax, and take a moment to reflect on the greatest story ever told, as my guest, Steve Reed, portrays Jesus Christ's earthly half-brother, James. I remember several years ago, I was living in Jerusalem and decided I wanted to surprise my mother and go visit her up in Nazareth, she and the rest of the family. So I took off a couple of days later. It's about a six-day journey normally. And sure enough, as soon as I got there, I surprised mother. She was not expecting this at all. We sat there and visited for a couple of hours, reminiscing and, and catching up with each other on all the different things that had been happening. And then mother asked me one of the most peculiar things that she could have ever asked me. She says, James, I want you to take me back to Bethlehem. I want to relive the experience from when your brother was born. I said, Mother, that's a long journey, and, and frankly, you're, you're getting kind of old. Well, she immediately says, don't argue with me. I told you I want to go. I'm up to it. Okay, I'm not arguing with my mother. So a couple of days later, we had collected all of the provisions that we needed, and, and a friend of hers had a donkey that we could borrow. So the morning of our journey, everything is loaded up, and I'm helping Mother to get up onto the back of this donkey. And she looks down at me once she gets settled and she says, James, you remind me so much of your father. I said, Mother, what are you talking about? She says, all those years ago on that first journey, your father helped me on the back of a donkey exactly the same way that you just did. Thank you. Wow, my dad was my hero. Well, off we go. With, with every step that we took, Mother was filling me in on, on some of the details, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the people along the way. What a wonderful time. And Mother says, now, now James, I have to take you back, all the way back to the beginning. She says, you knew I was a, a young girl when your brother was born. Well, an angel came to visit me one day. But this wasn't just any angel. This was the angel Gabriel. And he just appeared right in front of me. And he said, you are the highly favored one. And I didn't know what he was talking about. And Gabriel continued on to say that God had chosen me to bear the son of the living God. And, and I questioned the angel and told him, I've never been with a man. And the angel came back and Gabriel said, but the Holy Spirit of God will come upon you and you will be with child and you will call him Emmanuel for he is God with us. You will name him Jesus the Christ. And as quickly as Gabriel appeared, he disappeared. And mother said for the next few days, she pondered what she was going to do, how she was going to tell her, her fiance, Joseph, about what she had just experienced. But she didn't have to think about it for very long because Joseph had a dream. And in his dream, Gabriel came back to him as well and told him the same things, but added a couple of things. Added that he wasn't supposed to send Mary away. And Joseph said that he was supposed to take Mary as his wife and that they were supposed to raise Jesus as if he was their only son, the son of the living God. Wow. Mother and father were, were celebrating this conversation, these two experiences. 
And Mother continued on with many more stories along the way. And after several days, we were right on the edge of Jerusalem. And, and I could tell that Mother was starting to get tired. So I asked her if she wanted to stop at my place there in Jerusalem and, and rest for a few days. And she agreed. So the third day, we're ready to go again. And I helped Mother back up on that donkey once more. And off we go to Bethlehem. It's only a day's journey or so down to Bethlehem. Well, along the way, we started to see some of the different landmarks, some of the homes, some of the buildings that had been there all those years before. And Mother said that Father would, would leave her on the donkey, and then he would go over and he would knock on doors, door after door after door, asking the same question, do you have room for us? And everyone said the same thing, no, we have no room for you. You see, at this point in time, Caesar Augustus had ordered a census to be taken. And everyone had to go back to the birthplace of their family. And in our case, it was back to the city of David, back to Bethlehem. And we weren't the only ones that were doing this. There were hundreds of people that were doing this also. So there was no room for us. Finally, Father was getting so frustrated. He was so disappointed because we couldn't find any place. And there was one last building, one last inn. It was small. There was nothing much to it. And Father boldly walked up. Mother said that, that he left her back on the donkey once again. And he walked boldly and knocked on this one final door. And the innkeeper came to the door and, and asked how he could help. And Father motioned over to mother and, and said, my wife is pregnant and we need some place to, to stay. I mean, she's almost ready to, to give birth. Do you have anything? And this innkeeper, he, he kind of hung his head low and says, I'm, I'm sorry, I have, I have nothing. About this time, the innkeeper's wife came and she had overheard part of the conversation and, and they started discussing between themselves and he said, we do have this, this stable back in the back. It's not much, but, but at least we could make you a little more comfortable. Well, Father very quickly agreed. And, and the innkeeper's wife, she turned around immediately, went back into the, into the house, and, and she started gathering blankets and towels and, and cloths. And she yells out, I'll meet you back in the stable. So Father turns and walks and helps Mother back to the stable. <laughs> this day, I walked back and mother was helping me or escorting me back to the stable. And as we approached the stable, it looked exactly as mother had described it. And in so many occasions telling this story, I, I, I saw the cattle, I, I saw the sheep and the goat, and there were chickens running around and, and pictured the sights, the sounds. The smells, oh, it was a stable, the smells, oh my. But you know what? As we were back there that day, we heard a, a noise from, from the side, and, and it was the new innkeeper that was coming out to greet us. And he asked us what we were doing there. And you see, the old innkeeper had passed away, and, and this new gentleman, he had taken over, and he didn't know what was going on, and mother quickly explained to him all those years before that she and my father Joseph had been there and she had given birth to her firstborn right here in this stable and he is Jesus the Christ and that innkeeper looked at us and he says so the stories are true I, I thought they were just they were just fables of of things that somebody wanted to sell more rooms in the inn and mother shook her head no no, they were all true. Believe me, they were true. Well, we walked into the stable and, and off to one side was, was this little manger, uh, just a feeding trough. And she says, James, look, that's the manger. That's the manger where we laid your brother. And she says, the innkeeper's wife came back out to greet us way back when and and your father quickly grabbed one of those blankets and and there was hay in that in that manger and he laid the blanket over top of 
that manger to, to make it into a little bed. And, and then he took another blanket and he laid it on that, that bale of, of, of straw and hay and someplace where I could lie down and, and give birth. And a short time later, I did give birth. Your brother made the most amazing grand entrance of any child I have ever known. The whole stable was filled with God's majesty. The light was so bright we could barely open our eyes. The angels were singing glory to God on the highest. And there I was holding your brother, Jesus, the Christ. Emmanuel, how could your father and I possibly raise this, this child? Well, about that time, there were angels that, that greeted some shepherds that were on the hillside just outside of town, and they were, they were watching their flocks. And these angels appeared and said, Do not be afraid, for a great and wonderful thing has taken place tonight in the city of Bethlehem, in the city of David. Christ, the Savior, has been born. Been born. Go and visit him. Worship him. And at that moment, the sky was filled with the multitudes of angels singing glory to God in the highest. And these shepherds did exactly what they were told. And they immediately went and followed that light to the stable. And there he was. There was Jesus, and all they could do was bow down and worship Jesus, my brother. And I realized after all of these years, I realized that if it hadn't been for my mother having that, that virgin birth, and if it hadn't been for Jesus walking a perfect and sinless life, there would have been no reason for him to go to the cross and to bear my sins. And if it hadn't been for Jesus dying on that cross and taking my sins, there would have been no reason to, to have mother have a virgin birth. You see, Jesus and the cross, that is the real reason why we celebrate his birth. Jesus taking my sins, taking our sins on himself and dying on that cross. We celebrate this time of year because of Jesus' incredible birth. A blessings on you, on your journey of hope and of grace. Blessings. really a different perspective wasn't it you know so many of us are used to hearing the uh, nativity told through the eyes of the other characters surrounding the nativity and the birth of Christ like Joseph and Mary but you know James has a great perspective too and that was just wonderful so let's welcome the man behind this project Mr. Steve Reed to the program welcome Steve hi Teresa how are you I'm doing great and it's so good to have you on the program Thank you. and so delighted that you're going to be a part of our Christmas program this year. I appreciate that. Thank mm. you. Well, now, Steve, we know that you're a great storyteller, but I know there's much more than meets the eye to you. So share with our viewers a little bit more about yourself. Well, professionally, I've been in, in sales and marketing for all of my adult life. I've enjoyed doing that, but my real passion is telling stories about my big brother. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, now, where were you in life when you surrendered your heart and life over to Jesus Christ? Well, in Teresa, when I was 16 years old, I, I had grown up in the household of my father being a, a minister, and my mother was a school teacher, and I was asked to go on a lay retreat, and I was going to be one of those that would share Christ with other people. And I thought, I can easily do that because I knew all the Bible stories. And I was confronted on a Friday night by a simple question that said, are you ready to give your life over? And that was it. It was as simple as that. 
Oh. I was 16 years old at the time. 16. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's wonderful to, to come to the Lord at that age, mm -hmm. that crucial age, yeah, isn't it? It was. And uh, uh, he's walked with you ever since. Oh, every step of the way. Awesome, awesome. Now, what inspired you to write the book, My Half-Brother, and create this unique ministry? Well, it, it, Teresa, the, the Reader's Digest, so to speak, is I've been involved in church productions over the years. I've been a, a worship leader involved in a worship ministry for many years, actually all of my adult life. And I was involved in a couple of productions that were telling the story, and I had seen the story from the perspective of Mary and Joseph and an angel and a shepherd and a disciple and all these other people, and I had never seen the story told from the perspective of one of Jesus' siblings. And so Easter Sunday, 2011, I actually sat down, I was going to write a play that was mm -hmm. depicting the life of Christ. And I realized after about 20 to 25 pages that I was actually writing a novel. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be the book, My Half Brother. Oh, wow, that's great. So it just kind of flowed out of you. It just flowed. First time writing? First time writing. Well, I've, I've done writing for marketing and mm -hmm. helping businesses Mm -hmm. make money and, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing and mm -hmm. I've done some blogging and those types of things in the past but this was the first time I sat down and actually wrote wrote a book of any sort my half brother a journey of hope and grace through the eyes of James so I want to make sure the viewers are aware of the book that we're talking about sure. today and that's awesome it looks really nice and so your your first book that you've written mm -hmm. have you written any more well I'm in the editing process of a second book which is called Lazarus a journey of hope and grace and it's the story of Lazarus obviously Ooh. and then from the perspective of his sisters Mary and Martha I tell the story about how Lazarus and Jesus met uh, you understand there's nothing recorded about that event so mm -hmm. I take some literary license and yeah. put Jesus and Lazarus together and I've got a couple of other books that are ideas of things that happened to the disciples along the way and some of the miracles and some of the things that they did as well as as a result of their life with Christ. Oh, well, now I'm going to want to see that Lazarus play. I'm definitely want to going to see that because <laughs> that's going to be really exciting. Yes. Uh, have you ever heard of the singer Carmen? I have Carmen? not. Oh, my. He's, uh, he's got a song that came out in the 80s about Lazarus, okay. and it was very creative. So you must listen I'll to that. I'll you must listen. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth. And it's been one of my favorites, and that's where I was introduced to Carmen and then found so much more of his music okay. uh, so refreshing okay. and so encouraging and full of faith. So I know what you do as well is encouraging and full of faith, and, and we really appreciate that. Um, now, what do you hope that the My Half Brother project and your presentations will do with people? What do you hope they walk away from uh, receiving from these pr projects? Uh, Teresa, I think my biggest desire is to, for people to have a closer walk with Christ. Uh, we're living in some crazy times with all kinds of, of horrible things that are happening and, and the only hope that we have is in Christ. And if people get to know who Christ, the Christ is, the true Christ, who He is, and they can walk and follow Him. That's my ultimate desire. And it's so, so interesting, we, we hear people talk about the deity of Christ, but a lot of times we don't think about the humanity of Christ. Yes. So in the book, I actually talk about some of the human things that Jesus did and what it was like for James to grow up with Jesus as his big brother. Oh, that's awesome. So you're putting skin on Jesus. Absolutely. Putting skin on Jesus yes. and making him relevant. Yes. Wonderful, which he is, of course, of course. Well, could you share one or two uh, testimonies of how your book or your presentations has encouraged someone? Sure, happy to. I'll tell you the most recent one. I've, I've done several performances where I go to churches. I've done uh, men's retreats and some corporate events as well. But most recently, the, the stories that I've told, I've had some people that have come up to me afterwards and they gave me the best bit of encouragement or the best thing that, that compliment they could have possibly given. And they said, I felt like I was right there. Oh, nice. So if I can get people to feel like they are right there, that's my ultimate goal for people as I'm doing a presentation. One of the early presentations I did was for a men's group, a men's retreat out in East Texas. and. One of the gentlemen was so touched by the presentation, he felt like he was there and he, he developed a new passion for following Jesus. 
he actually hand carved the staff that I use in my presentations. Oh, nice. So that is a very touching thing for me. So when I when I have that, mm -hmm. that's just my own symbol of saying, okay, this is what God is doing through the ministry. Absolutely. Well, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. So that's a treasure for it sure. It is, very much. Absolutely. Well, now, uh, I'm sure during this journey that you've received a deeper meaning and revelation of scriptures mm -hmm as you've gone on this journey. So tell us about one of your greatest aha moments surrounding the birth of Christ. One of them is actually, it's more in, in relating to the next book that I'm working on, but talking about Peter and his relationship with Jesus. And in the research that I was doing recently, I actually discovered something interesting about Peter. When Peter was doing the right things with Jesus, he was Peter, he was the rock. Mm -hmm. But when he was messing up, as we so often do, when he was messing up, he was back to his name, Simon. So the whole story behind that is we need to be more like Peter and less like Simon. And I hadn't realized that until just recently. Well, you know, I've never heard of that mm -hmm. either, so I'm going to look into that. And of course, I also know that any time a great uh, transition or event happens in your life that you receive a new name, mm -hmm. you know, from God, you know, Sarah, Sarah, and uh, Abram, Abraham. Sure. And uh, so I'm going to look into yeah. that. In fact, some scriptures are coming to my mind right now yeah. where it was Simon and then yep. where it was Peter. So, exactly. so that is a great aha moment. It thanks was. for Thanks for sharing that with us. Well, now I understand that these presentations that you do can fit any age and any platform. Yes. So share some of the places that you've taken this presentation to. One of the early presentations that I did was at a, a gentleman's home. He had about 35 friends in his men's group that were there, and it was on a Friday evening in a fall setting. We had a fire that was crackling in the background. Actually, we can see his swimming pool in the background as well, but I came and I gave the stories to, to a men's group. I've done large corporate church events. I've done smaller, more intimate church events. One of the favorite things that I do, what I, I've been a, a big fan of Zig Ziglar for many years, and every Monday morning they do a devotion time, and I've shared their devotion several different times on Monday mornings. That's one of my favorites. But I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing with, uh, I, I did a, a retirement home back in the spring this past year. Oh, okay. So pretty much anything, any age, for the most part, from around 10 to 12 years old and up. Mm -hmm. I don't have any kids, so it's sometimes difficult for me to relate to the real little ones. Mm -hmm. But from, from their 10 to 12 years old and up. And when I go to a presentation, whatever the presentation is, if it's a group of men, I try and tailor it to that specific group. If it's a group of teens, I'm going to make it a little bit more teen-oriented with those sorts of things. So I try mm -hmm. and be reflective with the, the audience that mm -hmm. I'm working with. That is great. That is awesome. Well, now, uh, in, I know this is very difficult, but in a few sentences, share with the viewers, look at the camera and share with the viewers, what does the birth of Christ mean to Steve Reed? Now, well, Teresa, the birth of Christ to me is, is hope. I have as a, a subtitle of my, my book is actually, it's a journey of hope and grace. And to me, I, have, I could sit here for hours talk about all of the failings that I've had over the years, the times that I've, I've really messed up, big things and little things. And knowing that I have a Savior, knowing that I have somebody like Jesus that I can go to any time and say, I'm forgiven, I'm, I'm sorry, I messed up, please forgive me. Knowing that I can do that gives me such confidence in my walk with Christ on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, Steve, it has been so delightful to have you on the program. Thank you for coming and sharing your gifts and talents with us today. Teresa, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And you know what? We're going to have your contact information up on the screen so our viewers can reach out yeah. and contact you and, thank you. and the churches can find you and reach Absolutely. out to you and bring you into their church. Thank you very much. And we wish you much success with all of your endeavors. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Friends, you may have heard the nativity story told a thousand times over, but I encourage you to take time out of your busy schedule this holiday season and read all about it again. 
you will continue to find more and more encouragement and more and more insight every time you read it. After all, it is the greatest story ever told. Now please enjoy the following Christmas music sung by award-winning songwriter and my friend, Mary Jackson. Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten Children listen To hear the sleigh bells in the snow song blessed you. I want to give special thanks to my guest Steve Reed for coming and sharing his amazing storytelling with us today and to my friend Mary Faye Jackson for sharing her Christmas music with us. May you and your family experience Christ's presence in your hearts and lives more powerfully this holiday season than ever before and may the love of God surround your new year with amazing blessings. Merry Christmas everyone. Thanks for watching, and God bless you. Thanks for watching the Time with Teresa television show. For guest and sponsorship opportunities, contact Teresa today.